بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله now today we go for second juice of quran yesterday <coughs> we had a brief overview of first juice of quran surah baqara and uh, surah baqara continues in second juice of quran as well so inshallah quickly we will have a overview of this second juice so those people who are reciting quran at their home they can have understanding of ahkam rulings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the rulings in these verses of quran so start from the second juz sayqulu safaha min an-nas ma wallahu from here second juz is started and hukam of tahwil e qibla comes in second juz change of qibla hukam of change of qibla allah subhanahu wa taala's commands to change the qibla came in second juz Allah says qad nara taqalluba wajhika fis samai falan walliyannaka qiblatan tardaha fawalli wajhaka shatr al masjid al haram certainly we Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala observe that repeatedly o prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam you raise your face towards the heavens therefore Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed you to turn your face towards the qibla the kaaba in makkah so this hukum prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got during his prayer prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was performing prayers while he was in makkah and at the time of miraj allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted five compulsory prayers and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was doing prayers facing towards baitul muqaddas when prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam came in madina so prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam continued praying facing towards baitul muqaddas about 17 18 months but that was the wish of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam because prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam's acquaintance and love with allah's house kaabatullah so that was the wish of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would like to face towards qibla towards kaaba so there is a verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed during prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was performing zuhur prayer and there are the different narrations one is in the house in madina and sari's house one is the masjid and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam during the uh, imamat during the uh, prayer prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam got this revelation and during the prayer prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam changed the face and it is totally opposite and now there are the uh, there is a masjid in saudia qibla tan the masjid of two qibla so where also people were turned their faces immediately while they listen the hukum even after people call starting telling the other people oh now the change qibla change qibla and faithful people were so much you know followed the commands of allah subhanahu wa taala when they heard even in prayers they changed their faces turned their faces totally opposite direction and this is the iman and this is the faith and this is the following of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and then there is a verse in quran uh, allah subhanahu wa taala says kama arsalna fikum rasulan minkum yatlu alaikum ayatina wa yuzakkikum wa yallimukum alkitaba wal hikmata wa yuallimukum ma lam takunu ta'lamun allah says even as allah sent a rasul messenger from amongst you that he may recite allah's verses and should purify you and bestow you with the book and teach you the wisdom and educate you that which you did not know 
So in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told that we send our Prophet among you and this is the duties of my, our Prophet to recite Quran, to teach wisdom and knowledge and also purify yourself. This sort of uh, subject Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discuss other three more places as well. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرْكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفُرُونَ So you engage yourself in my remembrance so I shall remember you and be thankful to me and never be ungrateful. So what is that? How we be a grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Always engage ourselves in the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is a token of showing your gratefulness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a hadith in which as Aisha ta'ala narrated, one day Prophet sallallahu because Prophet sallallahu was standing long, sometimes there is swelling on the blessed feet of Prophet sallallahu and sometimes bleeding. And once as Aisha ta'ala said that, Oh Rasulullah sallallahu why you are doing so much work hard? So Rasulullah sallallahu said that, I should not be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So how Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by doing salah. So remembrance is the best way to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. So how we do thank to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by reciting Quran, by doing ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by engaging ourselves in a zikr Then there is a verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَنْ يُقْتَلُ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَمْبَاتِ So and those who are killed for the cause of Allah So those who are killed for the cause of Allah do not call them dead So there is a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala any shaheed, any martyred is not uh, we cannot say he is dead Allah says he is alive but you don't know his life So also now there is a pandemic time and there is a hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam if any person dies with epidemic he is also a martyr he is also a shaheed and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we will test you Allah says we will test you what do you test? test our faith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says I will test your faith how? with some fear, with hunger with the loss of goods, lives, and the reduction in fruit products. Therefore, give good news to the steadfast people. So now, my brother and sister, this is the time of test. We have a fear, we are having a losses, and we have the losses of lives as well. And this is the time we connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be steadfast. And Allah says that أَلَّذِينَ إِذَا أَصَابَتُمْ مُصِيبَةٌ قَالُوا إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا لِلِرَاجِعُونَ And when some misfortune overtakes them, they say, we surely belong to you, O Allah, and we will are surely to return him. And we are surely to return to him. So whenever any, any affliction comes, so faithful believers remain in patience and they say inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun now after that in second juz there is a hukam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ya yuan nasu kulu mimma fil ardi halal and tayyibam wala da tabi wa khutuwati shaitan so O mankind eat whatever is halal lawful for you and never follow the footstep of shaitan surely he is your open enemy so what is that? Halal and tayyib Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And halal is two ways. You are, what the product is halal and the earning is also halal. If earning is not halal and product is halal. For example, if a person is eating halal meat but with the haram money. So he is eating haram. So we be careful about both things. This is the hukam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the those we cannot eat them, haram. What is the haram thing? 
اللہ سے زن و حرم علیکم المیت ودم و لحم الخنزیری و ماہ اللہ بہ لغیر اللہ فمنت الرغیر باغم ولا عاد فلا اسم علیہ ان اللہ غفور الرحیم سو اللہ سبحانہ تعالیٰ سے از دیٹ اللہ ہیز میڈ ان لافل آن یو اونلی دا ڈیڈ نو باڈی کین ایٹ ڈیڈ اینیمل ایون ڈیڈ اینیمل از حلال فار ایگزامپل این اینیمل از حلال بٹ دیٹ اینیمل is died with any disease and we cannot slaughter them properly with the name of Allah so this animal is haram so all dead animals whether it is are those from those animal fall in the category of halal animals category or haram all animal dead animal haram and the blood all blood type of blood is haram and flesh of swine and the flesh of animals slaughtered invoking someone else names If Takbir is not saying, not saying the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even the animal is halal, but it, not, it, it will not be halal to eat. So uh, it is, these are the few conditions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned here in this verse of Quran. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَنْتُ بَلُّ وُجُوهَكُمْ قِبَلَ الْمَشْرِقِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنَامَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Allah says that virtue is not to that you turn your face towards east or turn your face towards west. But the virtue is that you have an iman on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have iman on Yawm al-Akhira. You have iman on Malaika. You have iman on books. You have iman on Nabiyyin. And you spend your money for those who are needy people. So you know what happened? Jews and Christians, they were mocking uh, um, that, uh, look at that, you, you are doing, you're turning your face here and you're turning there when the tahveel a qibla. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that qibla is just a direction. Qibla is a, just a direction. Wherever you turn your face, Allah is everywhere. And what is the real essence of Islam? Real essence of Islam, believe on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not face. Why you turn your face? Because this is that command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But physically, no Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. So the, this is the uh, verse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the second Jews of Quran. Then the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the commands for the Qasas. Qasas is anybody kill any person. So in return, you kill the other person or you can take money for that person. Qasas or Diyad. For example, if a person kills the other person, so in return of the, what is the punishment for that? And that punishment, you will not take the law in your hand. That punishment comes from government. And otherwise, you, the person take money, that is called Diyad. And the third option, a person can forgive that person. Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum al qasasu fil qatla. So, الحرب الحر والعبد بالعبد والانسى بالانسى انسى فمن عفي فمن عفي له من اخي شيء فطبا بالمعروف وادان اليه باحسان او يو بليفرز ريتاليشن ريفنج اوف بلاد اوف ذا مردرد از اوبليجيتري سو يو كان تيك ات ابون يو ذا فري فور ذا فري اف ا فري مان دايز سو ان ريتيرن يو كان تيك ذا لايف اوف ا فري مان ذا سيرفنت فور ذا سيرفنت اند ذا فيميل فور ذا فيميل If anyone is pardoned, forgive his brother, then it is a good act in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then there is a hukam of the obligation of the fasting of this month of Ramadan. Verse number 183, Surah Baqarah, Allah says, Ya ayu al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu. كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون او بليفرز فاستنج هاز بين ميد كومبلسري فور يو از ات واز كومبلسري فور ذوز بيفور يو سو ذات يو ذات يو مي بيكم بايس يو غوت بايتي فير اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى متقين سو هير الله سبحانه وتعالى جيفز ا كوماند اند افتر ذات الله سبحانه وتعالى ديسكرايبز ذير ار ذا few days it it means a one month and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also provide provision if a person is on traveling if a person is uh, sick and so they can do uh, fasting later 
I can they can also give fidya. Fidya is that amount. If a person cannot do fasting and in near future there is no hope he he be able to do fasting, so then he give money or he give food to a person and to that with that food the other person can have suhoor and aftar. More now the scholars they put the amount of fidya about four pound or five pound per day. So if a person is not doing fasting, so he can give a fidya. Um, for example, if a person is so much in old age and chronic disease, so there is a provision. What he gonna do? Uh, he give uh, for money for his food. So sohor and aftar about the roughly they make the amount five pound. If a person give the five pound per fast, so then Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala forgive us. Then Allah says, very beautiful verse, verse number one eighty six. وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ عِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِ إِذَا دَعَانِ فَالْيَسْتَجِيبُ لِي وَالْيُؤْمِنُ بِالْعَلَمِ يَرْشُدُونَ Oh Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the my devotees ask you about me. People are asking you about me. Where is Allah Subhanahu wa Taala? Where He lives? Tell them I am very near to them. I answer their call. When they submit to me, then they should obey my command and should believe in me, so that they may get the correct direction. So, this is the then uh, also another nemat Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes in these verses that are those sohor. So provision of sohor and provision to go to your uh, wives in the night time. In the daytime, when a person is in the state of fasting, husband and wife cannot meet. And in the previous Sharia, even in the night time, husband and wife can can could not meet as well. And initial time of fasting, that ruling was continued. So the fasting, if a person start now, this for example, the month of Ramadan is far starts, even starts, you know, uh, a person breaks the fast, and after breaking the fast, even he cannot meet in the night time with his wife so zamar azza wa jalla anhu accidentally met his wife and he became he repented his this act in front of allah, in front of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam then allah subhanahu wa taala revealed these verses and then allah subhanahu wa taala also give a provision to to meet your wives in the night time one thing and the other thing allah subhanahu wa taala also give a provision to kulu washrabu hatta yatabayyana lakum al khayt al abyad min al khayt al aswad it means a person can eat the whole night there there was a sahabi a rasul he he was doing very hard work and you know at, at that time what was the ruling at the time of aftar when we open the fast and after opening the fast if if anybody can take a sleep then another fast starts there is no sahur and that sahabi rasul came and he was doing hard work and he slept when food was prepared he slept so because he slept he could not take the food and he continued his fasting seven day uh, second day so so he continued his fasting second day and he became unconscious in second day So Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala revealed these verses, and Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala gave the mercy. So this is the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And here Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala also describes a beautiful verse: the relation of husband and wife. Allah says, "Hunna li basul la kuman tum li basul la hun." Husband and wife both are garments to each other. So covering, beautiful covering. Then another hukum of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala: "Wa antum aqifuna fil masajid." So do at a kaf in masajid. So Alhamdulillah, this practice is going on in every year. Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in his life in Medina, Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was sitting in at a kaf last ten days. This is called sunnah at a kaf. So we are doing Alhamdulillah, and uh, this at a kaf is only be can be done in masjid for females. Uh, in Hanafi scholars, they say that women can do at the kaf at home, but women can 
declare that portion of that home is masjid make a musalla and make a one corner in her in her house and and then take it as a masjid and do as a kaf during ramadan and after ramadan as well then there are the verses regarding hajj the verse number 197 allah subhanahu wa taala also look at that different ahkam is coming in surah baqarah ahkam is regarding tahwil qibla change the direction of qibla ahkam regarding allah subhanahu wa taala says about fasting then allah subhanahu wa taala also gave the provisions regarding fasting and then ahkam came here for hajj al hajj wa shuru ma'lumat فَمَنْ فَرَضَ فِيهِنَّ الْحَجَّ فَلَا رَفَثَ وَلَا فَسُوخَ وَلَا جِدَالَ فِي الْحَجِّ Allah says the Hajj Muslim pilgrimage is well known in the fixed months. So Hajj is in the fixed months, in the fixed days. We cannot rotate that Hajj. That was the custom of Arab. They hold it the Hajj in a good season. For example, this is summer season. They said, okay, we do Hajj every year in this time. No, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala said, "No, we have. You have to do Hajj that particular time. If that month is coming in that, so the month of Hajj was Al Qadha, Al Hajj, and Muharram because the people started doing their traveling and then reach there and then perform. That is why these three months are sacred. So Hajj performed in Al Hajj, and other than that, we cannot perform Hajj." So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describe here there are the certain days to performing Hajj. Then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala taught us very beautiful supplication here, verse number two hundred and one. Allah says, "Waminu ma yaqul Rabban atina fi dunya hasanatam wa fil akhirati hasanatam wa qina dabun nar." So this is the beautiful supplication Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. taught us here in the verse number 201 allah says and of them there are some who say o oh, rab o oh, our sustainer confer on us the best in the world and the best in hereafter and defend us from the punishment of the fire and this is a beautiful supplication allah subhanahu wa taala is teaching us in second juz of quran and uh, this is almost the nisf of the second juz of quran then is a verse and that verse needs to self reflect everybody and now listen this verse carefully and what is the verse and what is the demand of allah subhanahu wa taala look at that verse number 214 am hasibtum an tadkhulu al-jannata wa lam yaatikum mathal alladhina khalaw min qablikum masatum al-basaa wa al-dharaa are you in the impression that you will enter paradise without such trial allah has the question oh you people do you think that you enter in janna without such trial that was faced by those before you what happened what the trial they gave it who gave pass those away before you they faced severe sufferings and touch distresses with shaking earthquakes and even the their prophets and those who believed along with them cried out when come the help of allah so much allah subhanahu wa taala said that we test your faith you think that you enter in jannah without giving any test without giving any trial before this ummah muhammad muhammadiyah we we took a very we a very difficult trial so because you know without any test no institution declares that this you know candidate is a successful so how allah subhanahu wa taala allah says how the criteria of allah subhanahu wa taala says i also test the iman of people and jannah is not an easy you get the jannah without putting yourself in difficulty facing any hard time well this this comes from allah subhanahu wa taala and believe me this is the time when we show our love to allah subhanahu wa taala by remain patient and by remain connected to allah subhanahu wa taala 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says a beautiful uh, verse as well. Allah says, وَعَسَانْ تَكْرَهُ شَيْهِمْ وَوَا خَيْرُ لَكُمْ وَعَسَانْ تُحِبُّ شَيْهِمْ وَوَا شَرُ لَكُمْ Verse number 216. Maybe you dislike anything, any, any affair, that is better for you, that is khair for you. That is the short-sightedness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes here in this verse. So we are short-sighted. We don't know maybe anything that you like it and that is a shar so maybe that you love something but it may be evil for you we don't know so Allah says that put your trust upon my wisdom if any affairs comes to you you think that this is comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah knows best Allah is alim and Allah is basir then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described the verse regarding the wine. Allah says, Yes, Aluna Kanil Khamri wal Maisir, Kulfi Maithmun Kabiru Mumanafi Walin Nas. They asked the question regarding wine and gambling. Please declare them in both. These are the uh, greatest sin, though they have some profits for mankind as well. So, in this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that these are the very bad things. Maybe you get some profit like in gambling, but totally haram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the verses later in the next use. Inshallah, we will read those verses as well when that come. Here is the very straight verse. Very straight verse. What is a verse? Verse number 221. Do not marry Mushrika woman till they believe so you cannot marry any woman or woman cannot marry other so you cannot marry out of faith and you cannot marry Mushrika nowadays it is also a matter of question some people are saying that I'm doing marry with the Christians Ahle Kitab it is allowed so ask the belief of Ahle Kitab the belief is oneness of God what is the definition of Mushrik? Mushrik is that who is believing not the oneness of God. So if the Christian and Jew is not having a belief of oneness of God, then they fall in the category of Mushrika. So we should think about it as well. Then there are the verses regarding the menstruation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that uh, they ask regarding menstruation. Verse number 222. 222 people are asking you know what happened at that time when the when women had this uh, periods uh, menstruation the, the people treated like that they are like you know in impurity and they cannot even touch anything so women cannot even touch anything they think that if they touch anything that becomes impure because they are in the state of impurity so it is like you know uh, a person have any epidemic disease so they treat it like that woman Allah says no this is what is this Allah describes here in the verse number 222 Allah says and they ask about regarding menstruation Declare that it is an illness. It is not like some sort of disease. So it is a natural cycle Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to that. So keep away from your wives at such time and do not approach them. This is the for physical, you know, the for the sexual relations. Other than that, you have a provision. You, you live together normal life until they are clean. When they become purified, you may approach them in a good manner. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala nullifies all those wrong practices while this state of a woman have in a state of impurity. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives a very beautiful verse. Allah says, Nisaukum harsul lakum fatu harsakum anna shiktum. Your wives are fields for you. So like a farmer loves his field, you know, it, it because... Uh, he gets crops so Allah says that from your wives you get your generation so give respect to your wife it is not only for 
or your for physical desires there are the many things so your generation connected your wife so your wives are your field then verse number 228 here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the iddat of divorce wal mutallaqatu yatarabbasna bi anfusihinna salasata quru salasata quru so three menstruation so iddat of uh, in divorce is three three menstruation allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it so and if a, if a woman has any child so when the birth of the child iddat is there if the birth of a child in next day the iddat finish in the next day so the birth of a child or three menstruation cycle is the iddat and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives that shows the dignity of woman some people take this verse other way round i don't know why this verse reflects the dignity of woman what is this verse فَإِن طَلَّقَهَا فَلَا تَحِلُّ لَهُ مِن بَعْدُ حَتَّى تَنْكِعَ زَوْجًا غَيْرًا When if you give a divorce, three divorces, it means so what happened? <coughs> Then keeping her will not be lawful to you, for to him. After all, she, she marries another person, then she can return to previous husband. so it means if a person gives for example if a person gives one divorce and that person upon one divorce does not approach to his wife and the time of it that lapsed then divorce matured and upon one divorce that divorce matured now his woman is free he she can do marry to that previous husband as well or any other husband but if in any other person but if a person give three divorces then that lady cannot remarry to her previous husband other than she married another person then got divorced then come back it is it me out of question some people says that the, some people makes the you know uh, some sort of For wrong remarks actually that shows the dignity of woman you think that woman and you uh, it is not a s- sort of you know you can play with the woman you have to pay the price so and you, and you cannot play like uh, she can do marriage and then you ask that person do no it is not like it means out of question you can approach your wife again allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and uh, wisdom and then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes in the verse number 233 regarding the suckling of that regarding the uh, feed of children is two year allah says that والوالدات يرضعن اولادهن حولين كاملين the mothers should suckle their children for two complete years this is the set rule allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made in quran maybe if children um, started taking other feed so that and now in this time also uh, many women they women are feeling some hesitation to believe me this is the best food for your child and also it is very good for the health of a woman as well or uh, this ahkam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we follow the ahkam of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we can away from many diseases and many problems as well so in these last verses mostly those verses are reflecting about the uh, uh, you know uh, ahkam regarding divorce and then suckling period and then uh, this uh, juice number second is finished inshallah we will start tomorrow juice number 3 may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us understanding and wisdom may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our effort may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what the commands we listen today may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us enable to follow those commands 
without any if and but. Now this is the time of Risha. I give the Azan of Risha so everybody can perform your Risha prayer and Taraweeh. Then take rest and inshallah Fajr. And uh, at the time of Fajr, inshallah, we uh, inshallah tomorrow 4.15 I will give inshallah recite Surah Rahman. Quarter past four, inshallah, tomorrow. And uh, now that you know the because of Ramadan, every you know the times to so note down our timings. So uh, tomorrow, Sahar time, according to our calendar, is Saturday. Three fifty-seven is the Sahar finish. So inshallah, we'll give us on tomorrow. Is three fifty-seven, and then immediately we do our um, Salah. And 4.15, then we recite Surah Rahman and brief discussion regarding the blessings of this month of Ramadan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep everybody safe and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our effort. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant His mercy, shower His mercy upon us. Jazakumullahul khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله صلوا في بيوتكم صلوا في بيوتكم الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله